Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Yes, we are a webinar. Um, you can call us that. We are proud of it. We've been doing it for nine years, so I think it's a good uh, format. <laughs> um, we, Incubus Live is broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you are unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's okay. We do record the show every week and post it up to our website, and I'll show you that after today. At the end of today's show, I'll show you where you can view all of our other archive, our archive sessions. Uh, we post the recording of the session. If there are any presentations or handouts or slides or things like that, those will be included as well, um, and links to any relevant websites that might be mentioned during a um, particular episode. Uh, we do a um, mixture of things here on the show, uh, interviews, book reviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, basically anything library related. That's our only criteria is that it has something to do with libraries, either something libraries are doing, uh, something we think they should be doing, <laughs> um, services and things that we want to show and share with them. Uh, sometimes some of the topics might seem a little outside the box. You may look at the title of a show and say, what? But trust me, it always comes back to libraries. That's my, my goal, so there's always, it's always something having to do with the library. Um, we do sometimes do some, um, just have Nebraska Library Commission staff come on the show and do presentations about services and programs that we offer through the commission. Um, and we also bring in guest speakers. And today we have a mixture of that. Um, let's see, here next to me I have, and we're going to have more detailed um, uh, introductions and whatnot as we get into the session, but um, just so you know, next to me is Steve Laird from United from Libraries. Um, and I'll bring them farther over there is Rod Wagner, who's the director at the Nebraska Library Commission here. And then remotely, uh, is Beth Nolinski, who's also um, from United from Libraries. Hi, Beth. Hi. Good morning. Um, and they're going to tell us, obviously, as you can see from the screen, about United for Libraries. Uh, trustees, friends, um, foundations, advocates, um, how you can do some of the resources we have here via Nebraska. So um, I think I'm just handing over to you, Beth, to... Um, actually, Steve's going Steve's to introduce himself first. Okay. All right. Like Krista said, I'm Steve Laird. Thank you very much for having me today. Um, I'm in charge of sales and marketing for a company called Reference USA. We're a division of Info Group located in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, Reference USA is a public library uh, database. It's a reference and research database. Patrons use it for uh, researching competitors, looking for sales leads, looking for job listings. But I'm also um, uh, the current president of United for Libraries. Uh, Reference USA has sponsored the United for Libraries Gala Author Tea for the last uh, 12 plus years. It's a great event at the, at the end of uh, ALA. And I'm also a United for Libraries board member for the last five years. Again, thank you for having me. Great. Uh, and uh, Steve, uh, just to reiterate, Reference USA has been a wonderful sponsor of United for Libraries and their support really enables us to make the resources and materials available to libraries, friends groups, trustees, and foundations that we'll go through. And uh, really excited to have him as president and he's been a wonderful, very supportive board member. So, I am Beth Novolinsky. I am the new Executive Director of United for Libraries following the retirement of our beloved Sally Reed uh, at the end of July. She was an amazing force uh, for libraries throughout her entire career. She has such a passion for friends and trustees and foundations and um, libraries uh, in general. So uh, I know we're, we're still going to hear from her and, and see her. And in fact, I'll be talking a little bit later about a webinar she'll be doing in, in October. So um, just a little bit about me. I'm actually, my daughter is probably going to kill me for this, but I always, I like, I love to hear people's personal library stories and why libraries are important to them so that you, people realize, uh, well, for me, that they know that this is really important to me and a passion of mine. So I have up here, um, Krista, you, I'm, I'm assuming you can see those pictures. Yep, yep. <laughs> so this is, um, I, my dad was in the military and we moved around a lot when I was a child and the first thing we always did in every 
uh, community that we moved to was we went and got a library card and that was just part of, of what you do when you move it move to a new place so many many different libraries in my in my life this one about two years ago I went to Plattsburgh New York where I had spent uh, uh, many many years growing up and this is me and my daughter outside the the public library downtown um, where I spent many 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 hours after school and I have the picture on the right of the <laughs> of the telephone because one a story I remember is I spent so many hours at the library um, my mom forgot to pick me up one time and I used it <laughs> her and say you are you coming to get me so I always thought that was funny it was still there in the in the library and then but this is a picture unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> This is a picture in the children's room of that same library, uh, again, where I spent many, many hours and knew the librarians very well. And uh, there, there used to be this big porcelain tub that was lined with carpet that you could, two or three kids could sit in there and read books. Mm -hmm. And they no longer have it, uh, but it was always just such a neat thing. And, and I, it just demonstrates how, how libraries can mean so much to people in their lives. Uh, one more picture here real quick and this this is a picture of the library on the Air Force Base uh, that I would bike to in the summertime and it was about five miles round trip because of the way that the base was set up uh, for me to be able to bike here um, and I did and I checked out so many books and I was there multiple times um, every week so uh, just a bit of a bit, bit of history there and I'll go back to um, the website so Okay. All right. Um, so anyway, again, just sharing that passion for libraries and how important they've been to me. I worked in my college library, uh, filing cards in the card catalog. I, um, I worked with Barnes & Noble doing community relations and worked with the library and the friends group there. Uh, Norfolk Public Library in Norfolk, Virginia for six years doing public relations and marketing. And then I went to Friends of Libraries USA. All right, so United for Libraries. Um, many people remember Falusa, Friends of Libraries USA. That was the organization when, when Rod Wagner first initiated this statewide group membership for Nebraska. Um, just amazing uh, to do that, and it really opened the door for us for a lot of incredible things that we've been doing. So United for Libraries, uh, it, we are a national network of enthusiastic library supporters. We believe in the importance of libraries as the social and intellectual centers of communities and campuses. So we, we encompass the friends, trustees, foundations, advocates, authors, library directors, uh, general people who just want to support and, and who love libraries. So a little bit about our, our mission. Um, it's, a, it's a long mission, so I'm just going to cut it down a little bit, but our mission is to support those who govern, promote, advocate, and fundri fundraise for all types of libraries. So we work with groups who work with school libraries, um, academic libraries, public libraries. The majority are public libraries, but there are definitely some academic and a few schools as well. Um, and we know that when the library director, the board of trustees, the Friends Group and the foundations work together in partnership. Libraries are strengthened and valued in their community. So our one of our primary goals is to help all of those people come together and work together on behalf of the library. And to facilitate the development and growth of these partnerships, we provide a wealth of training opportunities, resources, and support that I'm going to be showing to you in, in a few minutes. Uh, and I just wanted to also say real quick that a key area of focus for us is advocacy, because no one has a stronger voice for libraries than those who use them, raise money for them, and govern them. When, when you need to contact the elected officials in your community, at your state, uh, federally, and you're an employee of the library, uh, they hear that as a self-interest, of course, but when your neighbor calls or your grandmother calls or um, the person in a local business calls, that's where the power is, and we know that, and that is a key focus for us in developing that in Friends and Trustees, and Steve's going to talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, thanks, Beth. I would just say that uh, I think we're all aware that you know, the executive branch of our federal government uh, threatened to to defund uh, uh, libraries for fiscal year 2018, and and we all knew that that was a bad sign, and and, and that we, we were going to need to to rally the troops uh, to really kind of get the message out about why that's such a terrible idea about the importance of libraries, and, and you know according to our data, uh, uh, it's so important that library uh, trustees, friends, foundations, and supporters 
advocate on, on behalf of libraries. And again, according to our data, uh, since mid-March, uh, this, this cause uh, uh, garnered support from so many people that 21,000 emails were, were sent to the U.S. Senate, 42,000 emails were sent to Congress, and nearly 28,000 tweets using the hashtag SaveIMLS uh, went out. And, and the newly formed Corporate Committee for Library Investment, which uh, I'm a member of, uh, promotes libraries as an economic necessity, also delivered a letter to the Senate urging them to sign the LSTA and, and IAL letters. Ten returning senators signed the LST, LSTA letter who did not sign previously. So this was an indication that these efforts it paid works. off. We, we got new supporters. Uh, other signatures included all five freshman Democrats and six returning senators, senators signed the IAL letter who did not last year. So the message here is that it, it worked. We got the message out and we got the positive response that we were looking for because as of right now for fiscal year 2018, uh, library budgets are, are level with, with previous years. All right, excellent. Um, we, um, we are going to continue to expand um, our work to provide materials and support for friends and trustees to help them become effective advocates. And also, we're going to be developing resources to help library directors educate, encourage, and engage their friends and trustees as, as advocates. Because it, it's not historically been a role. Um, it certainly has been in the, in the past decade, more and more importantly. But in the past, it was not a typical role for friends and trustees to advocate in this way. Uh, so we're helping, we want to help directors encourage and engage um, their trustees and friends in doing that and we will continue to do that as well on a national level. Thanks. All right, so Steve, uh, are you going to tell us a little bit about your vision for your presidential year with United for Libraries and this transition as Sally is retired and um, we're doing great things and Talk to us a little bit about what your vision and your goals are for this year. Sure. I, I definitely have some goals. You know, as, as Beth mentioned, we are in a state of transition, going from the old executive director, Sally Reed, to, to best new leadership. I was lucky enough to be part of the selection committee that uh, interviewed candidates for, for, for Beth's position, and, and she came through like a shining star. Uh, ALA HR uh, agreed that we had a really strong panel of candidates for this position, but but ultimately, Beth won out, and we're really so proud of her, her work that she's done uh, previously with, with, the, with United for Libraries, really uh, shine through through the interview process. So we're, we feel really lucky to be working with Beth. We also uncovered that uh, during the interview process that United for Libraries hasn't done a strategic plan for a while, and, and it seems like now is a really good time to make sure that, that the members are, are getting what they want out of the organization, that we're providing value. Uh, so that uh, library trustees and, and, and friends and foundations get the support and get the materials and get the resources that they need. Uh, it's one thing for us to, to say we think libraries need this and we think libraries need that, but uh, getting that feedback from, from the, the trustees and foundations and, and, and supporters themselves is what's really going to drive that strategic plan. So we want to make sure our missions align with what members seek from the United for Libraries. And then uh, secondly, membership growth. Uh, United for Libraries is one of two divisions that had membership growth last year, and that's really a positive, positive sign, and, and I want to make sure that that continues. Um, so again, it's about making sure the value is there for, for the membership, uh, because when that's aligned, we think we can experience continued membership growth. And then engagement. You know, it's, it's events like this, making sure that, that we are talking to our audience about what we have to offer. Uh, sometimes, uh, I've, I've met with lots of different uh, friends, members, and, and trustees, and they just don't know all the great resources that are available to them. And when you take the time to explain that, you can see the light bulb go off in their head and say, I need to do more of that. I need to find out more about that program. So it's just about getting the message out whatever way possible uh, to let people know the great resources that are available to them. And then uh, Beth and I agree that, that statewide partnerships are really the, the way to grow our, our organization and grow the membership. Nebraska is, and, and Michigan and Texas all have statewide memberships. Uh, this is, uh, and, and I'd like to say thanks to Rob for that because it did uh, happen under, under your watch. It did start. 
Yes, so mm -hmm. yes, so thank you very much for that. Proud to be a, uh, a Nebraskan when we, when we hear great things like that. But states really benefit when they come in together because then they're all learning together. They're able to share ideas, uh, figure out ways to, to, to capitalize on the resources that are available to them. So those are uh, my, my goals and my vision, so to speak. But it's really about that strategic plan, which I think is going to help us drive the membership growth, the engagement, and then again, seeking more statewide partners. Yes. Thank you. And and truly, Rod was a, a visionary in, in, in talking to us about that with that statewide group membership. So thank you. And uh, we, your libraries, your friends, your trustees, foundations, they really do use the resources. So, all right. Uh, I'm going to jump into what, what we have for you and how to access it um, to make sure that you're really getting to take advantage of all of the wonderful things that we have. So I'm going to do a combination of some PowerPoint slides. I'm not going to read them off, but I actually created them and Krista will make them available because they do detail out the various things that are included. So I'll just sort of pop them up, um, touch, be, touch real quick on each of those categories. But primarily I want to take you through the website and how to get in and access things. So, all right, up here, move past my... Uh, daughter's picture so <laughs> all right so your landing page um, is ala.org slash united slash nebraska um, you can get into all of the resources from various points on the website which i will which i will show you but the quickest way to see everything that you have access to is to go to this landing page and log in from there and I will show you that um, in just a couple of minutes. So um, a few things um, that touch base on with your membership benefits. The first one is the Voice for America's libraries. And my camera should still be up there. So I'll show real quick just a couple of newsletters there. In Nebraska, the way it is set up is that a newsletter goes was set up to go to each board of trustees and a newsletter to each friends group. Um, sometimes a library uh, keeps one of those copies. Uh, I think it just varies around the state, uh, but there should be two copies coming to your library or a combination of your friends group and trustees. And I will say that if you want, if they're both coming to the library currently and you want one to go to the home of the friends president and one to go to the home of the uh, chair of the board of trustees, just let us know. We'll absolutely, absolutely update those addresses for your current people and when those people change in the future. And the digital version of the newsletter is available online in both the Friends and Foundation Zone and the Trustee Zone. So even though you have the one paper copy, which everybody loves this, we hear over and over again, don't go all digital. We hear that so frequently. Um, you can log in and access that PDF. Your the whole trustee board, all the friends, your foundation, library director, library staff, everyone. This statewide group membership covers everyone. So everyone can log in and access that. I will show you some of the other resources in there in a few minutes. Online trustee training, um, additional webinars digital publications, toolkits, discounts, and award eligibility. So I'm just going to run through these real quick and then we'll get over to the website and get into the nitty gritty. So online trustee training, short takes for trustees and trustee academy. So short takes for trustees is a series of, of 10 videos. They're about eight to 10 minutes each. They, if you have not watched any of them, they're, they're very, they're good because they're in an interview format where I am interviewing Sally. They're very non-confrontational. If you're in a situation with your board and in particular you're having struggling with a board member not understanding his or her role, um, showing these videos in particular, the ones about uh, board meetings and uh, board ethics and, and I'll show you the list in a few minutes, a topic that you're struggling with. It's a way to do a series of training where everyone on the board comes together to understand their role and in, in governance and not management, that the library director is the manager and the board is governance. And that's a really key thing for trustees to understand. And when they do understand that, it makes such a huge difference. So library directors, don't be afraid of your trustees being trained because well-trained trustees 
they will understand that difference and, and that relationship will improve. So these are just very non-confrontational, no one's speaking directly, I'm asking Sally questions and, and she's answering, and they're short. They are set up to be watched, uh, like one per meeting over a series of months, and then on there are additional resources, a little packet in PDF format that you can print out and give to the trustees to spark discussion. And it can be discussion about what's um, talked about in the video. It could be uh, sort of a, a board self-evaluation. How are we doing in this particular area? Advocacy, policies, working with the friends, all of these things. So it, it's really a way for the board to, to not only all be on the same page and understanding their role, but also to do a self-reflection of the individually and as a board as a whole to see where they need to do some training for them, additional training. Now, the Trustee Academy, these are these are online courses. This is a speaker presenting on a topic. Uh, we revamped all of these within the last year. Uh, for those of you who have taken the original courses, you know that they were long in, in the sort of 50-minute time frame, and we heard loud and clear from trustees and absolutely understand that they are volunteers and they have their own job and commitments and lives that are outside of their support and their work on behalf of the library. So those courses have all been trimmed down and they're about 25 minutes now each and we'll be adding more courses over time as well. So they're really, uh, we've shrunk them down, we've updated them with uh, new trends and, and, um, and discussion topics. So. Okay, and I want to say you're in good company. All of these states here that you see pictured and regional um, systems, they have all purchased access. While they have not done statewide group membership yet, they have purchased access to um, either short takes for trustees or trustee academy. So all around the country, library, state libraries see the value of these trainings for their trustees uh, and they're making a difference. Okay, so I mentioned additional webinars, and there are a few here uh, listed. Uh, the last two, Merging Your Friends Group and Foundation, and With Friends Like These, were both live webinars that we did within the last um, year, and they were they were fee-based webinars, so to attend them live, uh, folks had to pay, and to access the uh, just the recording afterwards, they have to pay, but they're included free of charge. A $50 value each, they're included free of charge for your statewide group membership. So do check them out. Merging Your Friends Group and Foundation is a big topic in library world right now, um, and the, the webinar with Peter Pearson and Sue Hall from Library Strategies, they talk about when is it the time, right time to look at that, um, how to go through that process, how to make sure that the friends group and the foundation are recognized in that process, and maybe to talk about when it's not the right time as well. So excellent, excellent resource. With friends like these is, um, and if we have any friends here on listening or listen in later, I know that it, these are not the groups um, that will be listening in, but with friends like these is um, based on a book that Sally released. Uh, that hopefully you can see I'm showing there, called The Good, the Great, and the Unfriendly, A Librarian's Guide to Working with Friends Groups. And uh, the, the webinar is uh, based on uh, best practices for working with friends groups and what to do when there is the, there are those issues between the director and friends, uh, looking at ways to improve that relationship, get past that, and then ultimately what to do if you just cannot repair that relationship. So it is a great webinar, whether you are experiencing problems or issues now um, in that relationship or the friends understanding their role, um, but it's also just great to watch to, as that sort of best practices and tips to avoid these um, in the future. And coming soon, as I mentioned, Sally will be doing a webinar for us in October called Troubled Library Boards Prevention and Survival, and talking about when uh, you do have that situation where a trustee does not understand his or her role, uh, a bully on the board, uh, the board uh, trying to manage rather than govern those various situations. Again, it It'll be one when it's live, um, that it's a fee to attend live, however, the recording will be made available free of charge to all of Nebraska within a week after that airs. So uh, if, you, if you feel like you have a question, you may send the question in advance to me and I'll make sure we address it in the, in the webinar. So if you're not participating live, you can still send your question and I will, do, I will put it there. And as we did with friends like these, there's no identifying um, information. No one will know what library, who asked, or anything like that. We, we 
work on the confidential confidentiality of that because we understand that talking about those issues um, is really difficult. You can ask anonymously. Exactly. Exactly. So, but no, I was just double checking. I yes. knew we to make sure. Um, Sally's book, we do have that book in the Library Commission um, collection here. So if you um, want to check it out from us, you can borrow it through the Nebraska Library Commission um, if you need to take a look at that in your own life. Excellent. And I will, I will say that one of the great, great things about this book too, and it is great for friends groups to look at as well, is that there is a, a compilation of great ideas in here. Um, great, great things that friends groups have done around the country. In fact, the chapter is titled Ideas to Steal, Taking Your Friends from Good to Great. So um, it, there is that incredible resource in there for friends as well. And yes, it's, this is a touchy subject. It's a little tricky to have these conversations when there are struggles between the director and the friends or the director and the board. Um, and they are they are difficult. So yes, the the what I will do is uh, we will we have a form uh, that I will I'll get that link out to you, Krista. So what what you can do is if you want to ask a question to be addressed in that webinar, the Troubled Library Boards webinar, there's a form that you can fill out that has that completely anonymous. Um, and then we'll we'll pose that question in the webinar and have it answered. And again, all of Nebraska will be able to access that webinar afterwards. Alternatively, you can email me. Uh, I would then know who was asking the question, but again, it would be confidential in the webinar and that information would not be shared at all. So digital publications, these are available for download in either the friend zone or the trustee zone. Those first five, the library board's practical guide, they're all in the trustee zone. The four after that are actually in both zones. Um, and I will show real quick, I believe Nebraska also has the 101 plus great ideas and even more great ideas for libraries and friends in your collection too, and Krista can confirm that. This is, we still actually have this book, even more great ideas for libraries and friends. It is still being sold. However, you all get to log in and download the PDF. It is a large file because it is the entire book, um, but you can download it and uh, have access to it right there. And it is a recipe book of great ideas uh, that for friends on marketing, membership programs, fundraising, um, all kinds of things. Um, yeah, so we did have that one. Um, okay. I actually looked up Sally Reed to look up to find the title. I'm going to guess we probably just buy everything she writes because we've got like <laughs> 10 or 11 different entries here. <laughs> yeah. Yes, again, as I said before, she has just been an amazing advocate for libraries um, her entire life. Um, I've said this many times, so I always joked that I just wanted to uh, follow her around with a microphone because she had such passion and it came through so clearly in, in all that she did. Uh, and I just wanted to catch all those snippets of the important things she would say about the value of libraries. So, um, excellent. All right, well, so you can borrow those there from the Nebraska Library Commission and obviously that even more great ideas. If you really want your own hard copy, we are still selling it at a significant discount to our members, and um, but also you can download it for free. Okay, so toolkits, I'm not going to read all of these off, but there are 11 toolkits here. And again, some are available in the trustee zone, some in the friends and foundation zone, and some in both. Um, so uh, these excellent. One I would like to point out that I think is really good uh, because we, we're talking a little bit about these apart, getting everyone on the same page in this partnership, but understanding the separate but complementary roles for friends, um, library director, and trustees. And that really goes through uh, about six different areas uh, and, and details out what is the library director responsibility in the management side of things. What is the board of trustees role in governance if they have one in that area and then what is the friend's role in supporting so um, uh, it's, it's very great there's a chart and then it goes into detail for all three of those groups it's an excellent excellent toolkit so I mentioned discounts um, uh, 
if you are a personal member of ALA or your library is a organizational member of ALA, you already get that 10% discount in the ALA online store, but friends, trustees, and if you are not a personal member of ALA, you can still get that. There is a coupon code which you find in both the Friends and Foundation Zone and the Trustee Zone. That is the coupon code you, you use to get that 10%. Unfortunately, they don't go together. You don't get the 10% automatically with your ALA membership and then be able to add the extra one. Um, but this is the process for the friends groups and trustees <clears throat> and any libraries out there where you either the director's not a personal member or you're not an organizational member of ALA directly. You can still get that discount. Um, and when I mention the uh, up to 40%, that is on this, this book, Even More Great Ideas for Libraries and Friends, and the Complete Library Trustee Handbook, which also I believe, Krista, you all have as well. Um, the new one from Sally is sold a little differently, and you have to buy that through the ALA store. We do also offer Skype consulting, um, either with a staff member or a member of our board, based on the specific needs of your library. So that is set up where it is fee-based uh, and it's affordable. Uh, the, the person who is signed for whatever your situation is, be it a board member or a staff member, will do a phone uh, consultation to find out what's going on and what are the issues and concerns, and then a one-hour Skype session with your group of people. So if it's your board of trustees or your friends, or maybe you want to do this with your friend's president, your board president, and the director, um, however that group is, it's that one hour consulting um, session and uh, we have people who can help with foundation issues, friends issues, trustee issues. Uh, so if that's something you want to explore, reach out to us and, um, and talk about that. All right, award eligibility. Uh, we do give two thousand dollar Baker and Taylor awards annually and two $250 National Friends of Library Week awards and I would say that the Holdridge Area Friends of the Library in Nebraska won one of the National Friends of Library Week awards in 2016 so congratulations to them and we do have information on our website about um, what they did as well as what a lot of other friends groups out there have done as well to celebrate and libraries because National Friends of Libraries Week is really a twofold opportunity for the friends to promote themselves um, but also for the library to say thank you to the friends. Um, all right, so assistance, and I'm gonna go show you all the stuff on the website, so we're gonna get there in a minute. But weekdays between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Eastern, you call our main number there, um, or you email united at ala.org, and uh, we try our best to always answer the phone live. We are a small staff. Uh, I, I like to, to joke sometimes about it sort of being the Wizard of Oz <laughs> that, that, that people often think that there's a large staff here, but because we're currently two and we'll have a third staff member soon, there are days that there is only one person answering the phone. So you may get a voicemail, but we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, and email our general uh, united at ala.org email box. Evenings, weekends, and holidays. We know that trustees and friends are volunteers and often they are trying to access these resources in the evenings, on the weekends, and yes, even holidays. Um, so send us an email if you're having problems logging in, you forgot the pet login and password, um, something's not working for you. Email, it may be you email on Friday night and we don't get back to you until Saturday, um, but we will do the the best we can to we check those emails uh, periodically throughout the weekend and several times in the evenings and I try in most holidays to check at least twice I was telling Krista yesterday that um, this past year on, on Christmas there there were a handful of people on Christmas Day who were watching trustee Academy or short takes for trustees videos and I get a I get an email whenever someone accesses one so that if I get two or three emails in quick succession with the same email address I can reach out to you and I can say are you having problems? What can I help you with? Um, so uh, it's it's amazing, dedicated people out there uh, taking their their time on their weekends and holidays to to be better informed and better trained to support the library. It's really amazing. Okay, so let's jump to the website. So all of Nebraska uses one login and password to access all of these resources through United for Libraries. Um, 
and uh, it is not linked if there's a library director who has a personal membership in ALA this access is not linked to your personal membership so you'll have a separate login for your own personal membership and then this one here for all of the statewide group membership benefits um, I do want to say that if as a library director or a trustee or friend you have a personal membership in ALA and you're tired of the logging out of one and logging into the other shoot me an email because I can put this access on your personal membership I can do that um, so shoot me an email and I'll do that and then you can use one login for everything but unless you've contacted us uh, for us to be able to do that for you then these resources are driven by the login and password that's available from United for Libraries or available by contacting the Nebraska Library Commission and often those emails that are coming in those um, outside of business hours are people asking for that login and password and and that's a quick response we can give that out so when you come here to this landing page oh and Beth I just yep. wanted to the, and here at the Commission Holly Dugan our CE coordinator that she would be the person to contact to get that password for yourself if you um, to get into here for anything Great, and of course, contacting us too when we get back to folks real quickly um, with that. And if you're having problems logging in, your trustees or your friends, foundation, we will help people as well because we do understand that um, that not everybody um, is used to, to working in this kind of environment. Um, and additionally, with both Trustee Academy and Short Takes for Trustees, we are also very um, aware of the fact that many libraries are rural and their internet access may not be sufficient for the streaming uh, so if that's an issue and the, the streaming is is hanging up on you is, is choppy it's it's not it's not working properly reach out to me because we have other ways of making sure that you can access those resources as well so it's not a stopper if, if that if that webinar cuts out and uh, or it's not working for you because of your internet speed we'll make it work for you we will figure it out so when you when you come here and you click this login button in the upper right corner of the screen to log in also all of these links as you go down the page also force a login meaning when you click it the login screen comes up um, so when that screen I'm actually already logged in but when you when you click that login button the login screen will come up I'm logged in on another page so it actually just took me right there to that so sorry about because I was already logged in on another page but uh, you if you click the my account in that upper right corner you will actually get this screen because it's a profile in um, in the membership database and I this is a, early on we had a couple of, um, of times that we had to deal with this in Nebraska but I had to say you guys are great there and it, this is smooth sailing for you the key to remember is even though you can get to this because there's no way I can block it if you try to change the username or, and password you'll lock out everybody else in the state from accessing those resources so do not attempt to change <laughs> <laughs> the login and password that we give you and again it it has not happened in in years years in Nebraska because you guys you guys are on it um, but I also do have those coded up with a separate email address that I get a ping if someone changes that username and password so if it other if, if it ever does happen if I'm near a computer I can go in and fix the issue pretty quickly um, there you. is <laughs> but I, I there's there, there is a balance here with say between not showing this to you all and 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 we're just telling you so you know so you don't end up in, the, in that situation um, all right so we'll go back here where we are actually already logged in to to the site um, this first thing right here this United for Libraries resources is an Excel file that we put together because as Steve said uh, folks don't always really know what we have we have such a deep deep website an amazing amount of resources available and a lot of times people don't realize what is there or um, realize that we have that tool available so this Excel file um, comes up when you when you download this it shows actually I'll just I'll just open it real quick 
out. All right, well, I don't know why it said page not found, but I will fix that. It comes, it comes up listing a bunch of all of our different resources, where you find it, and whether you have to log in to access it. So I will figure out why that did not load there. Um, ALA just recently moved the website to a new server, and so there are a few little um, quirks in there sometimes, and as we find them, we fix them. So these are the two webinars that I mentioned right here, uh, the recording, and also you can download the PowerPoints for both. Again, those are $50 each value that are included free with your statewide group membership. The Trustee Academy courses here, when you do click into um, these courses, you will find, all right, it wants to make me log in again because I was sitting here for so long, not in, okay. All right, so each, each of the courses are set up with a link to the webcast, the handouts, a, a request form for a certificate. If you would like a certificate that shows that you completed this course because you need that to account for the hours, for training. There is a form where you request that and then we send those out to you as well. And you can access all of these courses right here on the left and then a return to the Nebraska resource page. Um, uh, the, where this is what the page we call this here, our resource landing page for you. The short takes for trustees videos are here. The Engaging Today's Volunteers is a three-part webinar series about um, the Today's volunteer, how they're different. Uh, we have an incredible time happening in, in the world right now in the US with the baby boomers starting to retire and these people who want to make a difference, they want to volunteer and they want to use the skills that they have from their professional careers and how can you harness those people to be volunteers. You, your libraries, uh, many probably still have the, li the volunteer who's coming in and earning the 10-year pin, the 20-year pin, the 30-year pin, the 40-year pin. Uh, but there's such a changing landscape in volunteers and what they're looking for and this series of webinars will really um, help you to harness uh, the amazing uh, brilliance and, and skills of those of those volunteers. And we do actually talk about the millennials. We, we don't just focus on baby boomers, but we talk about that range and what are people looking for. Uh, again, yeah. this, yes. Um, yeah, I was actually gonna ask you about that because I'd seen in your slides about you had the specific, you know, um, access to the baby boomers that mm -hmm. would just, you know, recently the people have been sharing a lot of this, that millennials are saving libraries and they are mm -hmm. somehow not their big users. Are they also, is that translating into volunteering? Um, it, it is actually, it's very interesting that, you're, that you say that because we, um, this is one of the things that Steve's going to be doing is um, we're going to have a task force of a couple of board members who are going to look at that, that mm -hmm. question, and ha what is happening with millennials are, where is the success, what libraries are having success, what friends groups are having success in converting them to being volunteers, um, and what are the tips and tricks for doing that. So we're going to have a task force that's going to look at some of those issues. And then I believe that we'll, uh, we're potentially going to have a program at the ALA conference next year in the summer um, to look at that, uh, to talk about that as well. So more coming, there'll be more coming of, out of what that task force looks at and the information they bring together. We will be developing probably maybe a fact sheet, which I'll show you all in a moment, a tip sheet for trustees. It may be one of those toolkits or those digital publications. We may do a webinar. So we'll just, we'll look at what kind of information we're bringing together and we'll put that back out. Of course, whatever it is, um, whether it's a, a members only a tool or guide or resource, um, it will be available to Nebraska libraries as part of your statewide group membership because you get everything. So good question and stay tuned for more information. Yeah, we need to learn more about them definitely. Absolutely, absolutely. It's definitely a, a big, big thing that's um, on, on the horizon for us. So the Friends and Foundation Zone and the Trustee Zone are those member area zones and as I said, uh, they there are some things that are the same in both and some things that are a little different. Um, because those, you see that, that little thing that just came up there, it's because uh, when all of the links I have coded to make you log in because if I don't have it there and you click on it and you're not logged in, you get an error message and I don't want anyone to have to experience that. So that little pop-up box is just, um, the web server's uh, software that does the login process, just basically indicating to you that 
you're still logged in. So just click OK and move on. So you'll find some of those other webinars, webinars I mentioned over here on the left. You'll see a link to the publications, the newsletter, the current and archive newsletters are there. Going back to 2002 for the Friends uh, Felusa News Update is in there because there are just a wealth of incredible evergreen ideas for things that friends groups can do. Uh, just fantastic. Special offers, if we have one of our corporate sponsors that does a special offer to our friends group, a special discount or a trial of something, that's where all of that information is. Uh, the toolkits that I mentioned and also these the webinars that you're seeing here. Uh, there are these Friend Your Library materials in the ALA store. Uh, there are some buttons. There used to be some posters and bookmarks but those sold out a couple of years ago. So we just, just, just uh, launched a downloadable graphic set uh, that allows, let's see if I open link a new tab. Let's bring this up. So um, there is there is this graphic set that you can use flyers and a brochure, and there's also another one. I'll make sure it just just was released, so I'll make sure that link uh, goes in there as well. That is a, a poster format, two different size poster formats, and a bookmark um, that talk about the ways that you can friend your library or support your library. And there's an area for personalization at the bottom of that as well. And Chris, I know you said you put the links that are mentioned, so I'll make sure that you have that one too um, as well. So um, those are great materials. And again, you can use the 10% the discount in there. Uh, I have tried to build in as much as possible some navigation to help you get back to your state resource page. So uh, there is an interstitial page that you can go to, to hit back over here or you can just go back up to a bookmark or put that Nebraska in there as well. So these, all of these are the resources that are included. Um, I just double check my notes here. I talked about how to get help from us, why the training is important, how to access these benefits. Again, if you have a personal ALA membership and you'd like to just be able to access this through that without using the separate login, contact us and we'll take care of that for you. Um, of course, your friends and trustees who don't have that ALA membership, that they should use that login from, um, from the Nebraska Library Commission or, or contact me as well, our office for that. So, um, I quick because I want to have some time for questions. I just wanted to show you guys a couple of other resources. So conferences and events, National Friends of Libraries Week. I mentioned the Holdridge Area uh, Library, Friends of Library Group won an award in 2016. Uh, so National Friends of Libraries Week is the third full week of October. This is the 12th year that we'll be doing it. And it is, again, the opportunity for the friends to um, tout themselves, do a membership drive, say all the great things that they do on behalf of their library, and for the Board of Trustees and the library staff to thank the friends as well. We just did a webinar here uh, about a week and a half ago on National Friends of Libraries Week and ways that you can promote it and the things that you can do. So check out that webinar and watch that uh, for some great ideas if you've never celebrated. Um, virtual Library Legislative Day, going back to that uh, importance of advocacy. That federal advocacy, you cannot stress enough how important that is. Um, so Virtual Library Legislative Day is something that we do in conjunction with the um, Washington office. And you'll see here, these were the, the dates of National Library Legislative Day, where Rod uh, goes and the state library directors and people from all across the U.S. go to Washington to go and meet with their elected officials on Capitol Hill and talk about the importance of libraries and to uh, to communicate the value and it's 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 so much more than just funding actually it's that's the one we tend to think about but there are issues in copyright uh, net neutrality intellectual freedom privacy all of those big issues that that we're facing in libraries and that we work you all work so hard every day to to support and, and value of libraries and what they mean to us as individuals and to our country so you can, not everyone can go to DC, but you can participate in it virtually by sending an email, making a phone call. So here is where we help you make that possible. And we also provide you with uh, bookmarks that you can copy and put out for your patrons uh, for them to also be able to do this at the same time. 
um, as well. So not just your staff, but also promoting it out in your community. Um, listservs are an incredible resource that we have. It's here under Engage, Join a Conversation. So I have this here. Uh, we have one for friends groups, state friends, trustees, and foundations. And you can post a question on there and get answers back from hundreds and hundreds of, of folks around the country. The foundations is probably around 200 people, but the friends groups and trustees are over 1,000 people. And the state friends, obviously, it's a, that's a very specific group, so it is smaller. But a great way if you're having an issue in your library, your friends group is having an issue, or you just want to share a great idea, trustees want to ask a question, uh, trustees say, Can I, does anyone have a sample of such and such a policy or um, any, any particular question or concern and get feedback from, from folks all around the country. So those listservs are an incredible resource. Um, I want to also mention that ALA is going through a redesign of the site to be re responsive design. So there are there's going to be some changes to what you see on the United for Libraries site. We are working to make sure that those menus are as clear as possible and that the general uh, appearance of, of the ways, the pathways that I've demonstrated to you today will, will look the same. Um, as they do now, uh, but I did want you to just be aware that the responsive design, meaning that the site self-adjusts in its width uh, to accommodate being on a widescreen, a laptop, a smaller laptop, a smartphone, a tablet, um, etc. So if you do access from one of those smaller devices, you are going to be so relieved with responsive design and not trying to scroll around that huge page on your little phone. But it will look a little different um, in a probably by the end of September. Absolutely, reach out to us. Any questions, you have any problems at all, reach out. All and right. that won't change the URL, of course. That has no, it to does not. It has nothing to do with that. that. It's just a look. And the yes. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Thank you very much for, for asking that, Chris. Uh, it does not change the URL. <laughs> it does not affect your login and password. Um, though all of those things will be the same. Uh, the menus will just look a little different. Um, instead of having a left-hand menu in this way, you'll see different menus across the top, sort of a two rows of menus um, up here as, and, and sort of that drop-down focus more so than a left-hand navigation. It, it will improve things and it really will, that responsive design is an important thing that members have asked for. So. Um, Book Club Central, if you haven't heard about it yet, check it out. Lots of great things coming for this resource um, on book clubs for libraries, not only to help them support book clubs in their library, but also as, as Julie Todaro, um, the immediate past president of ALA, this was uh, one of her initiatives, she felt very passionate about turning those folks um, who are patrons and users of the library uh, who may not be a trustee or in the friends group into advocates for the library. So the book club members, even if they aren't part of the friends, uh, there is, that is another group to reach out to. So all the resources that you're going to find on here are, are Many of them are tailored to selecting books or how to run a book club or great successes or things like that. But you will also find that we'll be developing materials in here to help move uh, those folks from being users and, and book club um, attendees and participants over to being advocates so that those numbers that Steve shared with us at the beginning are even higher in the future. And hopefully we won't have to fight like this every year. Um, and then library quotes and authors for libraries. Um, these are two great resources out there. Library quotes is a wonderful searchable database of quotes about libraries, reading, books, literacy, and more. You can come in here and grab these quotes, use them on bookmarks, use them in your newsletter, put them on your website, uh, lots of different ways that you can use them. Each quote, once you go in and you're actually looking at the quotes, there's a button to post it to Facebook, to tweet it, to pin it to Pinterest, to all the different social media sites. So if your library is looking for ways to just have pings on your Facebook feed, because of course those algorithms, um, people need to be interacting and engaging with you and you need to be posting on a regular basis for you to continue to show up in their thread, be it your friends group, 
uh, Facebook page or your library's Facebook page, these quotes are a great, great way to just put up something. Because we always we all like the feel good quotes about what libraries mean in books and literacy. Um, and then you can switch over to Authors for Libraries, which is a searchable database of authors in your area. You put in a zip code, a, a number of miles distance you want from that um, zip code, and it will come back with authors um, who are in your area that you can reach out to to potentially ask to come do uh, speaking engagements, do book talks at your library. Uh, perhaps there is someone, a couple of authors that live in your town who would speak out to your elected officials about the importance and value of the library. Again, the 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 because the meaning that comes from those po people who don't work in the library, their voices are so strong in advocating. So I know we're here uh, hitting the hour, and I will absolutely answer any questions. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, and can you type in? Uh, this is our zip code six eight five zero eight here at the Library Commission. I'm sorry, what? Oh, uh, I was just thinking you can search there to see what we have here in Nebraska. Oh, so. gotcha. Yes. Oh, yes. Tell me. Tell me again. The zip code. Six eight five zero eight. Six eight five zero eight. All right. Well, I need to now, see. these authors choose to join Authors for Libraries, so it's not going to bring up, you know, the John Grishams and those folks <laughs> unless they choose to join. So I will say there is that that little piece um, there. So unfortunately, nobody came up within 50 miles of the Nebraska Library Commission, but we're adding authors all the time. We recently partnered with Sisters in Crime, which has about 3,000 author members, and the Horror Writers Association with about 1,500, and we'll be adding in uh, more and more of their authors as well. Okay. All right, great. Um, does anybody have any questions? Um, yes, we did just at 11 o'clock, but that's okay. We started a little late, and um, we will not close down or anything until we do answer all any of your questions. If you do have them, anything you want to know, anything else you want to see on the um, website, um, more detail on, or anything, um, any of the resources, or more information about. Um, I'll also mention while we're waiting, so if you do have any questions, um, Book Club Central, um, Beth and I were just talking about it yesterday, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and um, she's going to be back with us in October. Uh, we just confirmed the date, October 18th, to talk about that specifically a little bit more in depth. Um, so you won't see it on our schedule yet because we just did this yesterday <laughs> mm -hmm. talking about it. Um, but uh, we'll, be, we'll have more resource, more information about that coming soon, maybe. So author, yeah. publishers, we'll see um, what we come up with between now and then. Yes, so, hopefully some, some good surprises in there and it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Unfortunately, we won't have Sarah Jessica Parker, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, we were talking about wondering how much that would take to get her to come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> her fees are above and beyond us, but that's okay. Yes. I'm glad that she's doing this, though, that she's always been so... Um, Supportive of libraries and things, and I guess she joined in with this with you with with uh, United for Libraries in LA. Yeah, it is amazing, and she is really committed to um, helping to increase the awareness of libraries and advocacy. Uh, she and her family, are they use their local library a lot, and she's very passionate about it. And her mom was a member of a Friends of the Library group for many years as well. So uh, she's this is a great partnership, and we're really excited about some things that will be coming along in the future as well. So I don't see it, that anyone has any questions, so I'll just reiterate to reach out, reach out to us at any time. Uh, we want to hear from you. We want to know what United can do for you. What can we do? What are the problems that you're facing? Uh, what types of resources are, are better for you? Do you prefer webinars? Is it newsletter articles? Um, talk to us, let us know what's working, what you need, where, where there are holes that we can work to fill as we go through, especially our strategic planning process, and, and look at where we're going in the next few years. Yeah, I, I know that's a great thing. You don't have any idea um, plans for how that's going to be done, the strategic planning? Or you know, Beth and I, it is a work in progress. We do want to consider some outside uh, consultants or resources mm -hmm. to make sure that we're going down the right path. Mm -hmm. But I, ultimately, I think it's just going to be so important to engage the members to find out what they're looking to get out of the, out of the organization as a whole. Absolutely. And um, they, 
there, United for Libraries is very unique in, in our membership in that we certainly have those folks, the library directors and some trustees and, and, and some friends out there who go to the ALA conferences midwinter and annual and participate in the organization in, in that manner. But we have thousands of groups the friends groups, the trustees represented through some of these statewide group memberships and also those who join on their own who don't come to conference. So those are two very different um, member types and we want to make sure that we are truly meeting the needs of, of all of our members. So I, I anticipate, as, as Steve said, that we'll have a consultant working with us, that we will have some um, sessions during the ALA midwinter meeting. Uh, so if anyone uh, here or who watches the recording uh, wants to come and participate in those watch the United for Libraries website and newsletter for more information but that we will also be doing uh, some surveys or some town hall virtual meetings or some other things like that to be sure that we are getting the voices of all of the groups out there those trustees friends the foundation the boots on the ground folks who um, aren't coming to those conferences but their voices are just as important and we want to hear from them Great. We'll look forward to that. Keep our eyes open. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, it doesn't look like any desperate questions have come in while we've been chatting, and that's fine. Um, you covered everything perfectly, is what happened. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's great. Um, the, the show's been recorded, and you guys do have contact information for United for Libraries, so you'll be able to, any, any questions you do have, ask of them, um, or you can ask me, or as I said earlier, Holly. Um, we're also involved in it as well. Um, what I'm going to do now is I am going to pull back presenter control to my screen because sure. I wanted to show also um, related how this actually relates to what we're doing here at the Library Commission with it. There we go. Um, At the Library Commission, we do have programs for board certification, librarian certification, and then library accreditation. And the trustee courses and everything that Beth was showing you is related to getting your board certified, which then does feed into your library accreditation, um, uh, which is some libraries are in the middle of right now for this year, just opened up for 2017 renewal, um, re -upping for that. Um, so if you're looking to get your board certified, this is where you'll find the information here that all this United for Libraries um, is about. You can earn continuing education credits. You need 20 credits in a three-year period for your entire board, and there's different ways you can earn it, but we have links here to all the Trustee Academy courses, everything having to do with United for Libraries. Um, contact and Wilbur Hall, your CD mm -hmm. coordinator, who's in charge of this. So everything we've been talking about today, this is what is related to. The short takes are on here. Um, so um, if you are working for, towards your library accreditation and your board is looking for things, all those resources you just saw, mm -hmm. this is what it's all about. This is what it's for specifically here. Um, this is one of the things it's for here. Besides just as, as that, as you said, being on top of what you need to do as a trustee or a board member and how your director is supposed to work with them. If you're looking forward like, towards your library's accreditation and your board certification, here's how you can get to all of that on our website. So um, I think then, does anybody have any questions? Anything last minute you want to type in? We've got a few more minutes while I'll be um, chatting here. Um, type it in and we'll grab your questions before we go. Um, other than that, I'll say that I'll wrap it up for today's show. Um, Encompass Live, our website, the training here is actually what's great about Encompass Live is so far it is the only thing called that on the internet. So if you Google <laughs> us, <laughs> that's all you come up with. Yay. <laughs> Nobody else has ever had to call anything this. <laughs> um, but you can also get it from our website, but right there um, off of the commission's homepage. Um, um, our archives are right here underneath our upcoming sessions. So this is where today's recording will be posted. I'll post the recording. That'll be a link to the YouTube account, or YouTube specifically, oh, last week's when we have recording. Um, and then there'll also be those short bit of slides that um, Beth had will be here and links to any websites that she specifically mentioned that were um, important. Today's discussion will be linked on there. Everybody who attended here this um, today live and anybody who registered uh, will be sent an email directly letting you know when that recording is available. Um, probably tomorrow or late today, 
thinking of what I need to do today. And I'm also at the at the mercy of YouTube and it's uploading and processing of everything. So within the next day or two, you'll get an email letting you know that it's ready if you need to watch it um, again or share it with any other of your library staff members or your board trustees. Let them you know watch this. Um, you can earn continuing education credits for watching all of these as well. Every hour of webinar that you watch is an hour of CD credit. So um, show your whole board. You got five board members. They all watch this web episode. That's five credits. You get a credit for every person who's sitting there. So just so that you know. <laughs> um, so that will be for um, this week. Um, I'm working on getting other shows up here as we talked about. We're going to get our October dates going. Um, so we'll be more coming up here. Next week's topic is how to break up boredom. Interactive events for all ages. This is a really fun session, I think. This is uh, human-size board games, like life-size, it says life-size hungry oh. hippos. Oh, yeah. It'll be fun, but it could be a good workout, I can imagine. <laughs> so, Kids um, love it. Kids love it. <laughs> uh, Amy and Angie, who are from the library in Livermore, Kentucky, they are going to be on the show remotely for us, um, talking about this um, program that they're doing at their library. Um, also, Encompass Live is on Facebook, so if you are a big Facebook user, please do pop over there and give us a like. I post notifications about when um, the shows are coming up here, a reminder to log in on the slide for today's show if you weren't able and you didn't sign up ahead of time. So, um, whenever we have new shows to the session, recordings are available, everything I put up here on our Facebook page. So, if you are a big user of Facebook, definitely go over there and give us a like to keep up with what we're doing. Um, other than that, that wraps it up for today's show. Thank you very much for attending, everyone. Thank you very much, Beth and Steve and Rod, for being Thank here. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, any last just, um, words of wisdom to share? No? no. <laughs> Go to the website. Go to the website. Go to the and reach out. Reach out to us, really. Let us know. We want to hear from you. Great. Yes, absolutely. All right, then. Thank you very much, everyone, and for attending. And we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Thank you.